Now we're going to work on some practice problems. We're going to go through a series of unbalanced chemical equations, and we're going to work to balance them. These problems are going to get progressively more difficult. So this is our first problem. Hydrogen gas, H2, plus fluorine gas, F2, is reacting to make hydrofluoric acid, HF. So the first step in all of these problems is to count how many atoms of each element you have before the reaction versus after the reaction. So let's do that. I'm going to start with hydrogen. Before the reaction, before the arrow, we have two hydrogen atoms. After the reaction, we only have one. Hydrogen is not balanced. A balanced equation, we would have the same number before and after. Let's also count our fluorines. So before the reaction, we have two fluorine atoms. Afterwards, we only have one. Our goal in balancing a chemical equation is to have the same number of atoms before and after the reaction. We are only rearranging atoms, not creating or destroying them. So I am going to need some small whole number in front of this HF. I'm going to need to make more than one HF molecule as a product. So what I need to figure out is what number do I need to multiply one by in order for it to equal two? That's going to be two. One times two equals two. So what I just figured out is if I need two hydrogens in my products, I'm going to need two of these molecules of HF. We would come to the same conclusion if we instead looked at fluorine. HF, each molecule has one atom of fluorine. I want two. One times what equals two? One times two equals two. So regardless of which element you are looking at, either way you decide you need two molecules of HF as your product. So our stoichiometric coefficients are one, one, two. And once again, no one bothers to write the ones. You just write any of the numbers that are anything other than one. This problem is going to be a little bit more difficult than the last. So in our unbalanced equation, we have aluminum Al plus oxygen O2 reacting to make aluminum oxide Al2O3. But our first step is always going to be the same. Count how many atoms of each element you have before the reaction versus after. So let's count our aluminum atoms. Before the reaction, we have one atom of aluminum. After the reaction, we have two. Aluminum is not balanced. Let's count our oxygens. Before the reaction, two oxygen atoms. After the reaction, three. Okay, neither of these elements are balanced. So let's look at oxygen. The reason that this is a little bit more tricky to balance than the previous problem is that when you see the numbers two versus three, and keeping in mind that we want our answers to be small whole numbers, we don't want to multiply two by one and a half. We do not want to end up with one and a half molecules of something. So when you are looking at numbers like two versus three and trying to figure out how to balance them, you might end up needing to multiply both of these by something. So when you can't multiply two by a whole number to get three, that means you need to multiply both of these. What you are going to be looking for is what is the least common multiple. In other words, for two and three, it's going to be six. Two times three is six, three times two is six. So in cases like this, you want the least common multiple. So two times three is six, three times two is also six. So what we just figured out is that if we have three O2s and two Al2O3s, they would have the same total number of oxygens, six. So I'm going to put 
these coefficients a little bit lower than where they need to be because right now they are tentative. I know that oxygen to aluminum oxide is in a 3 to 2 ratio because that gives me at least the same number of oxygens. But depending on how aluminum turns out, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are 3 and 2. It could be whole numbers in this same ratio. It could be 3 and 2, it could be 6 and 4, it could be 9 and 6, and so on. I put these a little bit low. I wrote the coefficients low because right now they are tentative. They're in the right ratio, but I don't know if they're my perfect numbers. So keeping this 3 to 2 ratio in mind, let's count our aluminums over again. So before the reaction, we still have one aluminum atom. After the reaction, let's assume we have two of these aluminum oxides. Each of them have two aluminum atoms. Two times two is four. Okay, this is going to change our math a little bit if we assume two of these aluminum oxides. So now let's balance aluminum based on our new count numbers. We can say one times what equals four. That would be four. One times four equals four. So we just determined that we need four of these aluminums. Okay, so our stoichiometric coefficients are four, three, two. I want to double check our answer on this problem. So our balanced equation, we ended up with four aluminums plus three oxygens reacts to make two aluminum oxides. So I want to do our first step over again. I want to count how many atoms of each element we have before the reaction versus after. But this time, I want to take our coefficients into account. In a properly balanced reaction, we should not gain or lose any atoms. We should just be rearranging them. So let's count our aluminums. Before the reaction, we have four aluminums. After the reaction, we have two of these aluminum oxide molecules. Each molecule has two atoms. So two times two equals four. So aluminum is balanced. Now let's look at oxygen. Before the reaction, we have three oxygens, each with two atoms. So three times two equals six oxygen atoms. After the reaction, two molecules of aluminum oxide, each with three atoms. Two times three equals six. So these are both balanced. We did not gain or lose any atoms. So in this unbalanced equation, we have propane, C3H8, plus oxygen, O2, reacts to make carbon dioxide, CO2, plus water, H2O. So like always, we are going to count how many atoms of each element we have before the reaction versus after. So let's start with carbon. Before the reaction, we have three carbon atoms. After the reaction, we only have one. Carbon is not balanced. Now let's count our hydrogens. Before the reaction, we have eight hydrogen atoms. After the reaction, we have only two. And finally, oxygen. Before the reaction, we have two oxygen atoms. After the reaction, we have a total of three. Two in carbon dioxide plus one more in water. Now, I recommend picking one element first to balance. It will at least enable you to balance a subset of molecules in this reaction. However, we have three elements to choose from. Carbon and hydrogen are going to be easier starting points. What is unique about carbon and hydrogen in this reaction is that they are each only in one reactant and they are each only in one product. 
If we are looking for carbon, you see that it is present in propane, one reactant, and it's present in carbon dioxide, one product. It would be fairly straightforward to figure out what ratio propane and carbon dioxide would be in. I can apply that same concept to hydrogen. Hydrogen is present in propane and it is present in water. It is easy to balance only two molecules. However, I recommend leaving oxygen for last. If you decided to start trying to balance this with oxygen first, it's going to be more difficult. You see oxygen present in a reactant and two products, carbon dioxide and water. That makes it trickier. If we do not yet know what ratio carbon dioxide and water are to each other, then it makes it oxygen a difficult starting place. So when you are deciding where to start, if you can, always choose an element that is only present in one reactant and one product. So here you can start with either carbon or hydrogen. Either of those would be easy starting places. So let's look at carbon. Three carbons in propane, one in carbon dioxide. How many carbon dioxide molecules do we need to end up with a total of three carbon atoms? That's going to be three. One times what equals three? One times three equals three. So what we just figured out is that if we had one molecule of propane, we would need three molecules of carbon dioxide. That ratio balances carbon. It doesn't mean that these are our final answers because we only have balancing coefficients for two of the molecules, but it means we know what ratio these two molecules are in. They might be one to three, they might be two to six, they might be three to nine or so on, but we know what ratio they are in. Let's go on to hydrogen. Propane has eight hydrogens, water has two. How many water molecules do we need in order to end up with a total of eight hydrogens? In other words, two times what equals eight? Two times four four equals eight. So we just calculated that we are going to need four molecules of water. We will produce four molecules of water per each one molecule of propane. Okay, so at this point in time, we figured out what ratio carbon dioxide and water are going to be in. Figuring out the ratio of propane to carbon dioxide and propane to water means that we also have figured out the ratio of carbon dioxide to water. This gives me better place to balance oxygen. So let us do our oxygen accounting over again. Let's assume that we have three molecules of carbon dioxide and four molecules of water when we count oxygen over again, okay? So let's count our oxygens. Before the reaction, we have two atoms. After the reaction, three molecules of carbon dioxide each have two atoms of oxygen, so three times two. And we have another molecule, so plus four atoms, four molecules of water times one, each with one atom of oxygen. This is a total of 10. We have 10 oxygen atoms. So now it is easier to balance oxygen. We can say two times what equals 10? Two times five equals 10. So now we know our coefficient for oxygen is going to be five. So going to write the stoichiometric coefficients in their proper locations. We don't write the one five oxygens, three carbon dioxides, four waters. Now let's double check our work. So 
So now we have a balanced equation, but I want to double check our work to make sure that we balanced it properly. So to do this, I'm going to once again count how many atoms of each element we have before the reaction versus after. But when we are doing this, to double check our work to make sure we've balanced an equation properly, we should end up with all of the same numbers. We should have the same number of atoms of each element before the reaction versus after. So let's go through this. Carbon. We have one molecule of propane times three because they each have three atoms of carbon. One times three equals three. For our products, three molecules of carbon dioxide, each with one atom of carbon. Three times one is also three. Carbon is balanced. Now let's look at hydrogen. We have one molecule of propane times eight, because each molecule of propane has eight hydrogens. One times eight equals eight. For our products, four molecules of water, each with two atoms of hydrogen. Four times two is also eight. So hydrogen is balanced. Now let's do oxygen. Five diatomic oxygens each with two oxygen atoms. Five times two is 10. For our products, three molecules of carbon dioxide times two, because each carbon dioxide has two oxygens, plus oxygens for our water. Four molecules of water times one, because each water has one oxygen. This is also 10. So we have the same number of atoms of each element before the reaction versus after. So we properly balanced this equation.